Penwell Mlotra is... Oh, I like that. Yeah. You like that? I like that just, a lot. Just the saying of the name. Penwell Mlotra is a YouTuber, podcaster, book author, speaker. He's also started his own religion, which we've got to talk about in a minute or two. <laughs> but we had you on uh, a Burning Platform show not so long ago, and you were a major hit. I know that your own podcast is taking off beautifully. And it is lovely to have you here. So I thought we'd actually just get to know you a little bit. And I haven't actually spent that much time with you. Thank so you, this Karen. is terrific. Yeah, very nice to see you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much. I watch you. I watch Fresh. And I realize even DJ's Boo, you guys are still struggling to shake off like the radio thing. What do you mean? You guys still sound like you're broadcasting. Uh, That's called professionalism. Oh, That's called experience. Oh, take it easy. What you mean is you still have a lot to learn. Sure. Let's, let's go with that. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty dope, but it's, it's interesting because we, we get criticized because we're not professional yes, broadcasters like you guys. Because you're not as good yet, but you're getting there, and that's why I have you here. Because I think you've got a lot of talent. There's no sarcasm. No, there's no, sarca- there's no sarcasm. Here. This is it's what you call potential. I see a lot of potential. No, thank and, you. And I, I like your ideas. I mean, one of the things, and believe me, there's no ego battle here either, in case there are people listening going, oh, Gareth and Pinwell going up against each other. I could give two shits who else is doing whatever they're doing. And the more people come into podcasting, the better. You know, we've kind of, we started a thing with Touch years ago. Yeah. We started a thing with DJ Spoo years ago. Yeah. These are people who I felt could bring a lot of people to the internet and make a difference. Yeah. I watched your episode the other day just so people know that I am someone who's looking to you for what's the next big thing, right? We hope so. Um, I watched your episode with Sizwe Mpofu Walsh. Yeah. I thought it was very, very good. And I thought you acquitted yourself extremely well there on like a lot of interesting subjects. Um, I, I am pleased that we are in a country now where talented people are able, look, we're in a world where talented yeah. people are able to practice their craft, share good ideas, argue if they have bad ideas yeah. and have those ideas replaced with better ones. Yeah. I mean, that's how you see civilization moving forward. Agreed. I also watched, um, because I was recently on their thing, I, I watched a little bit, a clip of you that came up on Instagram today um, on that uh, Mitt Mac. Um, Mitt Mac Motors, Bobby yes, Pitkoff the and one. the team. Bobby. And, yeah. and I was on there recently as well. And it's good that there are all these people doing Content, making yeah. interesting observations about the world, sharing thoughts. This is this. Aren't you happy that this is a good time to be alive, right? I've got mixed feelings. First and foremost, shout out to whoever invented the internet. It's been a serious. No, Al Gore claimed he did, but he's lying. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's claimed Hectic. that. He also told us that we'd uh, have no ice left by now. That's not true. That's. I he know told that. us Florida would be underwater. That's not true. So he's just. So a, it's kind of like a just, failed prophet. He's just a liar. Okay. We have words for these people. Uh, shout out to whoever invented the internet as a tool. Shout out to whoever's given us mics and sort of showed us how to use the internet to broadcast and tell stories and offer opinions. And you're very right that it's pretty cool that we now have more tools at our disposal to kind of play the game that was only the privilege of the elite. Uh, so that's pretty dope. In terms of the problem with podcasting and all these other spaces is that they involve money, advertisers, and to yeah. some degree, it, it does become competitive. And I, I was quite naive about it. Not very, but I started feeling the egos and the funniness. And I realized it, it's as young as it is in South Africa, it's, it's actually competitive. And other people are, like the guys that came before us, people want to have like the five biggest podcasts in the country and no one else. And if you're dope, it's like, come work for us. If you try and do your own thing, we will sabotage you. But have you have have you had serious job offers? I'm sure you have. No, no, I no? haven't. No, uh, I'm, are you, I'm not gonna lie. Are you radioactive because of your opinions? Uh, I believe so. I'll I'll tell you why I haven't had serious job offers. So by serious, you mean SAPC? I mean like type uh, and s- someone who runs a media organization saying to you, "Listen, I will pay you to come and do your shows on our platform." So I've had that from Vodacom. I've had that okay. from That's not small. other platforms. No, I'm I'm thinking of more of the mainstream guys. And it would make no sense for them to ever call me because nothing about me is politically correct. And they would be making a mistake because they'd constantly have to beg me and remind me and I'd have to censor myself. <laughs> I struggle even with like brands. I can't work with brands. So I need to find an alternative way to like generate revenue from what I'm doing. But if the 
incumbents, the big boys, don't find a way to either work with us or groom more politically correct people that are sort of like us, unfortunately, they will get steamrolled. And when we're like billion dollar podcasts, we'll come and buy the SABC and turn it into a. <laughs> I I wouldn't. Know? Would you if you had a billion dollars? Would you buy the SABC? Uh, currently controlled by the NC government. No. No, I'm asking think, under those no, terms. No, I think I think they've I think they've eviscerated it. I think you'd be better off starting from scratch, which is what you're doing. I think no. you're in a better. No, I promise you, you're in a I, better position. I think collaboration there's so much legacy. Be hor- there's so much legacy mess there. I mean, I've worked there, so I can sure. tell you, the place. There are so many people that that nobody knows what they do. I can't believe that. That's and most. That's most uh, com- companies, institutions under the government. Yeah, a lot of fluff. Even useless, in pri- useless fluff. even in private business in South Africa, I would venture to say that there are a lot of people who are in sheltered employment. Fair enough, but it's not as bad as the government <laughs> preserves <laughs> useless jobs. This is why you and I will never get work in government. That's well, for sure. <laughs> we could, depending on. But I'll tell you, look, the SAPC as it currently stands, no. But I mean, if I was Elon Musk buying Twitter, I would come in and cut the staff to like a few people, and then keep all the. Advantages they have, free to air port. That was like that was and, a masterclass. And yeah. now, don't you think that that Elon Musk buying Twitter was the 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 absolute masterstroke of media? I mean, like here you have this. This is where the fish are, right? So you got to fish yeah. where the fish are. This is where all the opinions are. This is yeah. where all the the crazy and the good and the bad and the ridiculous ideas all meet. And it's where all the journalists started to do their thing. Mm-hmm. So essentially, you're you're, you're actually co-opting everyone onto your platform. And yeah. when you're Elon and you can then control that platform, that is the most mega media move ever made. I mean, if people talk about Rupert Murdoch and Fox News and Sky News, and that's a good story. They, Elon, even base, Elon, they base succession on that. But Elon, yeah. that's the story that still will be told. It's such a powerful move to take the machine that actually disseminates the, the stuff. Yeah. And to then impose a free speech moratorium on that, which he has done. I mean, a lot of people to saying, a large uh, degree. A lot of people going, uh, Twitter's way worse than it's ever been, but mostly they're leftists who liked having things their way. Correct. Beforehand. I mean, you you feel more free on that platform now than you did before. Uh that's debatable. But it they, there's much more free speech. There's less censorship by far. But yes, there is more abuse and vile rubbish. But he he's he's stuck to what he said. I realize that Americans are very big on bashing each other, even when it's unfounded. I was sad listening to Trevor Noah on the Daily Show, laughing at Elon buying Twitter at the time when everyone was like, "Oh, it's gone down in value." I'm like, the guy's explained what he's trying to do. Now all of a sudden, even the people that were bashing getting a tick, a blue tick, or whatever, the guy explained the tick is going to be so that we share revenue. Oh. We're trying to create an everything app to yeah. to mimic. Um, WeChat. WeChat in China under 10 cent. And 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 they were bashing. And I was like, this is unfound. The guy hasn't even done anything yet. And you're already criticizing him. I was like, this is whack. But he stuck to what he said and where he's made mistakes, mostly. He speaks about it openly. He says we've messed up. This is what we're seeing. We're trying to fix the bots. If you have any ideas, we're going to let out some of the algorithms or the coding mm. for you guys to look at. <clears throat> How could more transparency ever be a bad thing? Uh, the the elite would tell you that it's not a good idea. It's like democracy in this country is currently under debate. Okay, so tell me, because I knew we would eventually get to politics, but it, we're there now, so we may as well get into it. Like, how did you get to develop your take on politics the way that you have? Because you said just now you're politically incorrect, which I'd agree with, and I also regard that as a compliment, not as an Thank insult. Thank you so much. You are someone who thinks for yourself. You clearly read a lot of different material, some of it from this side, some of it from that side, some of it just philosophy, right? Yeah. Which doesn't necessarily take a side. And and I've heard the way that you ask questions and respond to things, and you're clearly a thoughtful person. But how did you end up in a position where you felt brave enough to say what you think? Because a lot of young people in this country are just so apathetic yeah. about politics. They've just given up. Correct. Most people your age and younger When you ask them about any major world event, American politics, the European Union, the ANC, Mm. the DA, they just go, oh, well, I'm going to stay out of that. I'll just smoke weed and shut up in the corner here. 
can I say something deemed controversial? Go on. I, I, you don't have to ask permission here. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I was part of a different groups of people around the country, white, black, colored, not so much Indian, who are pushing for more voter participation, especially leading up to 2024. And the idea, I think, generally is to try and get at least 5 million people to vote next year, especially the youth. Beautiful. Register. And, and I was part of that. Right. I've, I visit townships quite a lot. I'm in the streets quite a lot. I meet people. I'm in the malls. I ask these questions. And the penny dropped maybe a month or two ago where I decided to ask the same question to a couple of young people around certain political figures, some that have been around forever. <laughs> so your thoughts on Gates and McKenzie? Who's that? Yeah. Uh, Bantu Olomisa. Hi, Baba. Is that... Uh, and you're like, okay, young they, people. They don't know. Then I ask old people. Yeah. And they're like, I don't know what that is. Uh, the UDM and the PA. Ah, Baba. I realize that people don't know much. Just, you want people to vote, but they don't even know anything outside of the ANC, DA, EFF. They might know the IFP. They might know the Freedom Front because this is the top five. Some might know, obviously, Action SA now as a new player nationally, and, and but people generally don't know. And when I interrogated beyond that, just the knowing of the, the heads, mm. then you interrogate the politics of even the big three. They don't know. I've had a wish of only politically literate people getting a right to vote. Oh, Not everyone voting. Dude, I'm so with you. Like everybody talks about in America at the moment, they, they're on about like voter, uh, what do they call it? Uh, voter restrictions. Yeah. Like how some governors of some states are trying to make it harder for like black people to yeah. vote or whatever. You hear this in Georgia yeah. from Stacey Abrams. And I, I say to myself, well, you shouldn't make it based on how much money someone has, what skin color they are, whether or not they are uh, employed at this level or that level sure. or anything else, how much they've got. None of that stuff should matter. All that should matter is you should have to do a little quiz beforehand. Like 10 questions. Sure. Like, you know, which color is at the top of the flag? Is it the red or the blue? Sure. <laughs> um, what, what, are you the, like a human being? Who's the like, president? Are you not a robot? Like, like basic stuff yeah. that, that anyone who's engaged, because if you don't know, you will get the government you deserve, right? Correct. And if you deserve very little, then you'll get the leaders sure. who will give you very little. And this is what people don't want to acknowledge. And this is why I love Bill Maher, and I'm sure you like him too, is he says, we're a stupid country. He's talking about America. Yeah. But if that's true for America, it's probably even more true for us. Yeah. And it's sickening to me because 1994 was about this incredible opportunity for us to build anew, sure. to show the world how we could come together. And in very many respects, we did, right? Sure. But it was like the fairy tale and we didn't get to the ending. Yeah. Because somewhere along the way, half the people who were reading the fairy tale just opted out. Mm. They were like, well, if I can just earn enough money to feed myself, that's okay. Or even if I else. can't, even if I can't, that's also okay. And I'll just, I'll get cross and I'll talk about how, how I don't like the ANC at a bry or I'll, I'll go into the, the, the main street in the township and put tires there and rocks and complain about how I haven't had water for seven weeks. But I'm not going to change my vote. I'm not going to learn about civics. Mm. So that experiment led me to a point where I almost did a 180, not a 360. Mm. I almost want more people to not vote come next year. I would like the people who are <laughs> like, Ugh, I'll just go with, I'm like, please don't vote. I'd prefer someone who is fully engaged, someone who's an active citizen, yeah, someone who works hard, someone who's a taxpayer, someone who understands politics. And out of a country of 60 million, as much as we sold democracy, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have 500,000 fully plugged in people that are hardworking, that are engaged, that have a, a vested interest in this country being the people that decide where this country is going. It's not, it's almost the midway between dictatorship and, and full democracy. Full democracy in a country where the people are undereducated, politically illiterate, are not working, are dependent on the government just for 350 or whatever it is. Mm. It's a recipe for disaster. So then we, we just we set up a government where the people who know what's going on vote, but those people who are completely disconnected and dependent on yeah. government but don't participate politically, 
uh, what happens to them? Are those are those people who do vote just responsible, like parents are to children? Something like that. But you should earn the right to vote. You should earn the right to How? make a decision. How? I, I, so I mean, politi- qualified a, franchise. This is not. This is not the first time people have talked about this. But how? A, a politi- how do you do this? A political literacy test is one of the ways. Um, being a taxpayer, being active. Let's say you belong to a political party. If we're still doing that, belong to a political party. You attend branch meetings. You are involved in community work. We trust you to make a, a fair decision. But if it doesn't even make sense to me that social grant recipients, there isn't an alignment between have you voted before you receive a grant? Do you even know where it comes from? Do you know the process? You're just happy to collect it because you have an ID number. For me, I don't even think that's good enough. I think every social grant recipient should be forced to vote and should be vo- forced to in- engage in some level of community service. It could be picking up litter. It could be showing up at school, annual general meetings. Mm. You are alive somewhere. I think that's where you create a space for ghost beneficiaries because Ooh, you actually don't know the people I, that I are can, involved i can just hear a bunch of left-wing white people screeching now going oh wow you how could you even say this you sound like such a um a, 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 a some kind of like you've got a superiority complex Correct. who do you think you are that you telling other people what they should or shouldn't do for their benefits not um, just white people by the way because well, i've done these experiments yeah, online that's often where it starts i hear what you say yeah that's where it starts so how do you respond to the the socialists and 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 the people on the left in South Africa who would say that that is a, an extremely unfair, unequitable, and 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 basically you're on the path to just the most terrible society if you do that? How do you respond to them? Uh, so I I didn't get to your question about uh, my political knowledge. Of mm. course, I've I've had a curious mind since I was very young, and you get to a point where as you grow older, you you want to figure out who pushes the buttons and pulls the levers for how society acts. Why am I speaking English today? Sure. Um, why do I live in Johannesburg and I left Newcastle in KZN? Um, so you figure out that at some level in this country, politics is a huge force. So I was like, since it's a huge force, politics and business, let me indulge further. And in indulging further, I then peeled back the layers and that's how I can engage at least because then it's left, right, center, what about American? What about Chinese? What about dictatorship? What about autocratic? And to answer those people, I, I wish we could run experiments. And maybe we can, because South Africa is actually a lot of different countries in one. Yeah. If you were to speak. Well, our borders are completely arbitrary. Yeah. You get speak, speakers of Ndebele just over the Limpopo River. Sure. Swaziland and, and Lesotho were invented by. Pixley Kaisaka Seme, when he went to London during the time it was still a protectorate and had them declared sovereign, which is good for them at mm. the time as as black nations yeah, yeah. at a time where they had no ability to assert their sovereignty. Sure. But it's arbitrary. It is arbitrary. I mean, you know, the, the people who, the, the, the Basutu and, uh, you know... Swati? No, well, no, that, that would have been... Um, Bus, uh, ta, uh, uh, busi, what was his name? Um, the king, man. Mushweshwe. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Um, Mushweshwe was the king there, and you had the Zulu, obviously a nation independent of that. But they were all just smushed together. Yeah. First of all, by the British, then by the Boers, then everybody just accepted. Okay, that's the way sure. it is. Um, Botswana split between Botswana and Northwest. Sure. You know. Um, so outside of just the foreigners, we we a lot of different countries because. We've got spaces that are arguably very capitalist, spaces that are arguably socialist. So to anyone who's like, but you can't have this. It's like, let's let's run experiments. Let's zoom in on certain parts, certain geographies and be like, let's disconnect these people from the rest of the country and would they survive on their own? One of my criticisms is for an independent Western Cape. We want to go independent, sounds great on paper. You know, we work hard, the rest of this country, Fuck the ANC. The DA is doing a better job. And I'm like, I interrogated it. And as much as there's serious inequality in the Western Cape, I'm like, no, you know what? If I was to be a leader, I'd say, have it. Please have the Western Cape. It's an independent state. Do your best to turn it into Dubai. Unfortunately, you must leave, you must remove all your businesses that are and the investments rest of the in the rest yes. of South Africa. Suddenly it's not so rosy. Now all of a sudden, and if you want to have a pick and pay, a Woolies, a Capitech in the rest of South Africa, we need to now re-engage. And let's <laughs> see if this Western Cape that's independent is that great. 
So to those people, uh, it's unfair, it's whatever, you are taxpayer. The person on the other side who I know, some of them are my family members that I love very much. You are enabling them to carry on not contributing. It's so nice to give something to a beggar on the street and it makes you feel good and you're helping someone. He looks hungry. But you are telling him, come back tomorrow. You will mm. get something. Whereas if we starve them, and this is what difficult leadership entails, it's your child not playing PlayStation and actually going to rugby practice or doing their maths. It's, this is a sacrifice, but I know it's for your good. Stop giving beggars things because you, you're making them stay there. So this type of thing of saying you will not drive a car until you've gone through a driving test because you will kill people. When you are voting and you are not politically illiterate, you are literally in real time killing people. Killing people because mm. if you look at what the ANC has done, Marikana, life is demeni, mm. political killing. You are killing people because your stupidity mm. and ignorance gets given a voice because mm. everyone is equal. Absolutely. Let the people who understand, who are engaging and who are doing work, like the gift of the givers, let them have a say because they are like, but we are helping. This beneficiary, it's great that they're here. And at any given time, if he's like, I want to be like you, you're like, this is the process. Bro. You can drive a car just like me, but then go through the pain of actually serving. Okay, but we get back to young people. So you've kind of given up on the idea of getting more people to register to vote. I, 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 I'm at a point right now today, I might change, <laughs> where I want more people to not vote. Okay, but how do, do, we, do we encourage these people to remain ignorant? No, no, no. And, and what has gone wrong in our education system where people are so disconnected from reality and from that thing that I pointed out about you earlier, which you've, you've, you've really given a very good description of just by talking about how you came to the ideas that you're now in and the way you describe South Africa, for example, is a curiosity. There's a natural instinct there. There's a curiosity. There's an, a, a desire to find out information. That's how I mark intelligence. It's not how much you know. It's how much sure. you want to know, right? Fair enough. So... Why don't so many kids have that? Is it a hardware problem, a software problem, or is it an environment problem? As in, if it's hardware, like their brains are actually stunted because maybe they didn't receive the right food at the right age. There's a real problem with that in South Africa, there by is. the way. We have malnutrition. We have abuse in homes at a young age. Correct. We have uh, a fathers. lack of resources, absent fathers. That is a hardware issue, which is a sure. very difficult thing to solve. Correct. Because those people are alive now, and we must deal with them in the best way that makes it possible for them to make a contribution to society and to be able to look after themselves and whoever they have in their lives. Yeah. But that's a very deep, dark, difficult question. Then you got the software problem, which is education. It's a little bit easier to solve because if you put in place different levels of education, yeah. higher uh, institutions of learning, even what they gave up with Technicons, skills development, these are all things, mentoring, yeah. that can all be adjusted and fixed where necessary and required. But then there's the environment thing where, and I feel like there are intelligent people mm. who are just opting out. How do we get them back in? We can't leave them to just wander the plains of South Africa yeah. never being... Or leave but, through brain drain. But all we've lost is clever ones Correct. who... Who, who've opted out of the system. So we, they those, prob they're probably worse than young people who don't vote because they are actually so? valuable. No, I'm saying a young person who doesn't vote is just not voting. Hmm. But they might be useless. They smoke nyaupe. But hmm. the, the talented, special, skilled person that we're losing is actually like a piece of gold. And we're being left with like turd. <laughs> I got to visit uh, <laughs> China for maybe the fifth time this year. Wow. My, my kids were there. I was going to see them. And I got to visit Russia through invitation for the first time ever. Controversial. Now, oh. I mean, if you visit Russia now, that might mean you're obviously pro-Putin. Of course. You obviously hate the Ukraine. You what? obviously love war. You know, all of those things are assumed. Yeah, because propaganda works mm. and ignorant people buy into it. In my experiences with China, the little bit I got to experience of Russia, if you've ever spent a lot of time with Americans, you realize that Africans, South Africans, the Chinese, the Russians, Americans, we're, we're all generally the same. Mm. If you do a deep dive, the difference lies in leadership and systems. In this country, the problem we have is we have absolutely pathetic leaders, unfortunately. Agreed. I, and, and I say this out of respect because if you're fat and useless, you can only run so fast. Like you can give it your absolute all. 
our leaders, unfortunately, they have a ceiling. They've been in, some of them in power since 94. You think by now they'd be like, look, I've been around the block. I'm experienced. I now have some level of zero. They literally, they joined the Springboks in 94. They And some of them you know, have been moved from department, department, to, department to department. Nothing. Never making any of them better. Zero. Right. It is, it, it is sad. So we have really pathetic leadership. Yeah. They don't have the capacity to be better, even if you try, because we've tried. Blood from a stone. It's Oof. not going to happen. And then the second thing is we don't have good systems specifically that have consequences. Right. So if there were systems that have consequences, you look at China, you look at something as silly as the internet. One of my wishes is to have free Wi-Fi across South Africa because I believe the internet is a game changer. Access to the best information, education. And the greatest tool for emancipation. 100%. You for can anyone. even get foreign currencies coming in. You, you know, you're not the only guy from, from Newcastle that I've met who's impressive. There are two other gentlemen who I had in the studio just the other day. They've started a student travel business. Yeah. Newcastle is not a place where there's an enormous amount of opportunity. Comparatively, correct. Right. But because of the internet, yeah. there are now opportunities for people in these far-flung places. Sure. Parts of South Africa people have given up on to come and make a difference. I mean, the whole thing we're doing now is on the internet. So True. I agree with you. This is the tool for emancipation. We've been waiting for the next evolution of you know, yeah. unlocking mankind's potential. Yeah. This is it. It's right here. It's already there. The fact that we can't provide this free to every person in this country is a disgrace. I agree. Shout out to Newcastle High. Shout out to Newcastle. Mm. Fond of MoneyWeb and now Buzz... Biz news. Oh yeah, Alec Hogg. Alec Hogg is, is he from Newcastle? Newcastle high boy, <laughs> and his wife, by the way. Okay, very good. Uh, very good. So we don't have consequences. The internet is an example. So I come in as a leader. I'm like, oh, I was in America or at the UN. Hey, apparently the internet is this new game, and we must get internet for our citizens. But now what China will do differently to us, South Africa, is they'll curate what you can access on the internet in your country. So now all of a sudden. Kids can go on the internet, but there's no porn hub. Yeah. If you go there, right. it's blocked. Right. There's no garbage. It's you're forced to to watch stuff. And maybe to some level, even if you can, before you watch certain videos, you do these quizzes. Mm. What color is this in the in the in the flag? Right. Uh, who's the current president? So you know the kids that are consuming free internet yeah, and they, they're are learning. Them, they're teaching them about physics and chemistry correct. and mathematics and yeah. What element is this? Uh, element, uh, I don't know. Ask your friend. So now you're engaging. What's this? I see this hmm. element. And so, what they're doing for the rest of the world is TikTok dances. So this is what we're doing. We 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 have these amazing tools. You have a car, but you meet young people that live in an RTP house. That's a free house. That's an asset on any given day. Free house. It can be used for accommodation. You can run a little business there. They have stoves in there. A stove is a factory. A stove is where you can bake. You can cook. People have cars. I'm unemployed. I don't know what to do. I'm like, bro, you have a little Taz, which is my favorite car. Yeah, but what can I do with this? When I started hustling, my Taz was my Uber. Before mm. Uber and Bolt were big, I would transport kids at UJ and at Vitz mm. to Park Station, to OR Tom. You have got the tools, but you don't know how to use them. So good leadership creates these systems with a plethora of tools. We've got all these tools. Great. And then there are consequences to either using them, not using them, and how to use them. So... So on that note, last week I was looking at what was trending. I, I don't go on Twitter much anymore, but I was looking at what was trending on Twitter. The, last week, the undisputed subject on everyone with a brain's mind was Israel-Palestine, yeah. Hamas, Gaza. You know, it was a major – this this could be the catalyst of either terrible, terrible things, yeah. and you understand this, or it could be an opportunity for humanity to really, like, take stock and realize – what direction we've got to go in. But yeah. those are the only, it's, it, this is big thinking stuff. I asked people I know and people I, I thought I could respect intellectually <laughs> what they thought, very few of them had opinions on it, mostly because they're afraid, I think, I, I surmise, they're afraid to take a side because it's going to lead to arguments they're not equipped to actually argue with, right? So, They'll get into an argument about this, then they don't have the information or the tools to be able to talk about this stuff. Sure. The other thing I noticed is that trending on Twitter last week was Dr. Matthew. Oh, yes. In I, South I Africa. thought you were actually going to start with that. So this is amazing to me. Like, here we are. The world is focused on this. Well, let's say the people in the world who care about the world are focused on this thing. What is South Africa talking about? Dr. Matthew. Yes. And this week, just one week later, what are we focused on? 
Jada Pinkett Smith. Of course. And, and I'm like, Smith. And I, I, listen, I would love to be as charitable as possible to South Africans and say we're happy people. We don't wor- want to focus on the negative. Mm. We're not that interested in what's going on millions of Ks away in Palestine and, and Israel. And it's not our thing. Yeah. You could say that. You could argue that. We're not involved. We're more worried about the Cape Flats and Guamashu. And, but even yeah. so, they're not interested in Correct. the Cape Flats or Guamashu or even local politics. They're interested in this nonsense that doesn't affect anyone. Jada does not affect anyone's life. Zero. It's pure gossip. You know, you may have a good or bad relationship with your husband or wife. Yeah. But that's not going to help you. Jada is a terrible example. She's only a good example of how bad to be as a wife. So you pro-democracy guys want those people to vote. And Doc... And Dr. Matthew, this is this is a story about a guy who managed to bullshit his way into medicine and had, again, millions of gullible, credulous fools yeah. fell for it, just like all the credulous, gullible fools who will go to religious institutions Correct. every week hoping, looking for, uh, desiring some answers to big questions that they're not prepared to interrogate themselves. Yeah. You, so want, are, you want those people to vote. What are we to make of this? Well, I, I didn't say so. Oh. We're, we're here talking about your opinions. It doesn't sure. matter what I think. But what do we do about this? Why are we a nation obsessed with Dr. Matthew when we could be talking about important stuff? You know, there's an argument that Africans to this day still crave a monarch. They love the idea of a parent. Baba, Bab Zuma. We love Papa Bushiri. We love the idea of a parent that takes care of everything. And all we need to do is show up in the queue. If it means we put a cross, okay, we'll do that as long as Ubaba or Papa or the Queen Mother delivers. We're, we're, we're not ready for this concept of active citizenry and I have the ability and the power to get involved. And You could argue that... What can Br- I do Brit- Israel and Hamas? Ar- but you could argue and, that and Br- Britain isn't even ready. I mean, look at how... Uh, and I have a respect for tradition. I mean, I yeah. don't know. You, you, I want to hear your opinion in a minute about the the battle in the courts over who should be the Zulu king. Because <laughs> if this is true, the courts have basically said customary law is completely inferior. And it wasn't because the courts were given that authority. The members of the royal household gave them that authority. That's correct. They've undermined their own customary That's law correct. by going to the Western courts correct. and making it their decision. Please so decide like, on our behalf. Please decide because we are not able to. We are children. And because we have a family dispute, because that's effectively what it was. That's what it is. It's, it's embarrassing. Like, but this has happened in other countries too. Yeah. So what are we to do with this? What system is better, though, Penwell, than democracy? Because you're advocating strongly against it so far. Uh, Churchill always said it's, it's the worst, but it's the best of those worst ones. Israel, Palestine. I don't want to speak much about Israel and Palestine, but I will say this. I I sat with Bobby Petkov and we've got an episode that's dropped where I give my full views on on Israel and Palestine, specifically giving context. The piece of land they're fighting over is the size of KZN. Israel's got 9 million people. Mm. Palestine's got 5. That's a combined 14 million people we're talking about. They're fighting over history, back from Abraham, Mm. who's actually all their father. Abraham Mm. is the dad of... Judaism first, then Christianity, Isaac then Islam. And Ishmael, yeah. uh, so I gave context <clears throat> in that. It it is important. I one of the questions Bobby asked me is why is this thing not being resolved? And my answer was part of it is because it's not as important as we think. Um, it is important to certain people, and it so happens that it's people that do have microphones or megaphones more than others. So if the guys in the Cape Flats controlled media and you had a news twenty four ENCA, SAPC, that was controlled by them. We'd hear about the killings every, everywhere. New people have just been shot, but because they don't have a megaphone, so people that are vested, which is the right thing to do. If something is sensitive to you, you should scream, and the rest of the world should focus. So the people that influence the media on a global scale have the ability to shine a spotlight, and then we get involved. This sounds, this sounds suspiciously like the anti-Semitic trope of the Jews control the media. Um, so I can't speak, I can't give my full honest opinion on Jewish people, sadly. Um, right, it's a reality know, that I've accepted. you don't accepted. know enough? No, because the platforms that we broadcast on either have Jewish ownership or Jewish shareholders or friends of Jewish people. Um, I have a lot of Jewish friends. Um, really? Like <laughs> which one in South Africa? Which one? Uh, 
You know, one of the things that has happened since I've started podcasting at the level I'm at now is the sadness of realizing as soon as I befriend someone, I almost can no longer f honestly criticize them anymore. No, I, but it's a, it's a straightforward question. Which one? It's certainly not the SABC. As far oh, as no, I no, I'm not speaking about the South African context. Sorry. Even in the world. Oh, Even I, in the world. So I'm, I mean, the Murdochs aren't Jewish. So we're I'm, just talking about them I'm, in, in I'm not going to make the mistake of, of taking your bait and running with it. I just want to make no, I'm this... I'm not trying to bait you. It's a straightforward no, question. No, you, you don't realize you're baiting me. That's the point. Uh, my, my point is just the global platforms, at least the Western, that we are on, don't allow for fully unhinged, uncensored conversations around... The biggest one is Twitter. Elon Musk himself was accused of anti-Semitism no, by on the that. Anti-Defamation League, which, sure, is, sure. which is an organization sure. which is primarily focused on trying to find anti-Semitism, as left-wing as they are. Now, how, how can this be true if that biggest platform of all is not run by a Jew? And it's, it, this is, this is, you talk about the bait. I think you've taken the bait that the media is controlled by the Jews. That's fine. We can leave it there. Well, I won't engage further. We will because you're out of ammo. That's fine. You're, you're right <laughs> and I'm wrong. It's just, it's crazy. Look, it's okay. I, we, we can get into Palestine and Israel. And I do think sure. you started this properly by giving a bit of a historical context. Sure. But, but even that, I look around and again, to bring it home, people aren't interested in history. They aren't even interested in our post-apartheid history. Sure. People can't tell you about Codessa. They can't tell you. A lot of people go, oh, apartheid, apartheid, but they can't tell you what happened. It's because it's not published what happened at Codesa as well. It is not public knowledge. We can't see exactly no, we what they agreed on. we can see the negotiations, on. but we saw the result of it. We can see the results. The result so, is there. You go to Constitution Hill and get your own copy tomorrow. This is, this is why I said... No one's going there to get copies. That's why they're sitting on the shelves. This is why I said I don't think people should be allowed to, to vote. The people that are not engaged. And you, if you are fully plugged in, should you, you can't be voting with the, an 18 year old who doesn't care, doesn't know, is busy with TikTok challenges and 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 the the Israel and Palestine thing. Just to close off, I I, I was saying I I gave my full opinions with with Bobby. Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler, um, any uh, anti-Semitic oh no, we, sentiments. We hit that point where Hitler comes up in a conversation. Yeah. It always happens, right? So uh, Godwin's law. The, the, re the reason why I, I said I'm not going to go further than, than what you said is because I've been blocked on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, uh, on Instagram for, for merely, merely posting a picture of Adolf Hitler <clears throat> with, I think it was Joseph Goebbels who was his propaganda right. gent. Tell the truth, make it big, keep it simple. If you tell it over and over again, people will believe it. I literally got blocked from Facebook for like 30 days. Now, that is not even a conversation. I'm not even sharing my opinion. I'm not anything. And over time, you realize if I've been working with DJ Sabu for a year, the next person has an opinion. They don't know him. I've spent time with him. So I realize I can't be as unhinged as the next person, even if I feel the same. And... It's what we see with the ANC. A lot of the ANC leaders have got dirt on Zuma, Cyril, mm. Didi Mabuza, Ace Mahash. They will never say anything. Well, number one, because it affects their money. Yeah. But number two, because they know these people. So you, you realize to some level that whether we speak platforms, which we can debate, or we're speaking just people. Like I said, I've, I've got mates who are of, of Jewish faith. They're from Israel, etc. I can't give my fully-fledged opinion on what's happening there. Um, then I respect but, but you. I, but you I feel, feel no obligation to continue. No problem. Because you've already said, I don't know enough, which is the smart thing to say. I, I think I know enough, but I, I don't pick a side because I, I think this, this is going to, to answer what you are asking. The size of the land that's being fought, for, fought over, the reasons why they're fighting over the land. I mean, I unpacked all of that with Bobby, the population size, mm. the land per person on average. <clears throat> and and. Sure where you realize it's not, it's not just like a land issue, like we'd argue no, in South Africa. No, it's not a land issue at all. Even in South Africa, it's, we're not really, it's not really a land issue that people are complaining about. It's like poverty and access and those things. No. Your, life, we, we are, my, mine, we, your life and mine would not be measurably improved if they gave us seven hectares in the Karoo. So, so the contrast I wanted to get to, sorry, before we spoke and about anti-Semitic. The, anti the Karoo is probably more fertile than anything you'll find in the Levant. If the same number of people were killed in KZN 
with ANC IFP conflicts between Indians and, and black people in KZN, mm. white people and black people, sure. it would not get the spotlights that Israel and Palestine get because the people of KZN, white, black, Indian. But you're missing a big part of this. You're missing the fact that the three greatest monotheisms all originate from there and that they're all in constant combat ideologically and spiritually with each other in a way that they have to assert their ownership of these holy why, why sites. Why are they the biggest and, and why is the Zulu nation not the most influential tribe? Because numbers wise, they almost equal with Jewish people. It's a few million off. The number of Jewish people in the world because, and the number because of Because I'll tell you why. Sure. The, the secular Jews who have existed, and, and religious Jews, frankly, who've existed, yeah. there are only 12 million of them in the world, right? Very few. I think it's 14. No, it's, t- no, it's 12, 12 yeah. maybe 14 if you sure. think. But there are 8 million of them in Israel. Sure. Okay? Those people throughout history have documented for themselves and Correct. by the people who were around them Correct. for the last 5,000 years incredible contributions and advancements to society. I'm not Jewish, but you've got to acknowledge. Where did you get this information from? This is, I mean, look, look at our oldest book. What's our oldest book? The Bible. Based okay. on whose opinion? No, 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 no. I mean, you can go back to the, the epic of Gilgamesh if you like. But there's an interesting point here about the Bible, okay, which the, the origin of the most widespread, most quoted, most influential text of sure. all time. Sure. Who put that together? Who put it together? Yeah. Which people put it together? This tiny group of people you're sure. talking about. How do you know this? Isn't it? Uh, this is available information. It's not do, like do, a, you, do you know that the Jewish people are almost similar in number as the Zulus? Do you know that? Well, I assume so because you're telling me so, but I'll go and check if I But you won't know because it's not, no, it's it not, it's not like blasted the, the, to the world. The great, but it's the, not blasted to the world. So you're saying, We can't blast Hinduism, which is the oldest religion in the world, as arguably the most important one because it's not blasted to the world. Well, Because certain channels well, that, that push that, the textbooks the media stuff are, are controlled and influenced by certain people, whether we like it or not. The ANC has an influence on this, the this SAPC, is, this is whether a, we like it or not. This is a trope. And, and to your point earlier, let's leave it. Thank let's you. go on to something else. Thank because you. Because I will, I'll have this conversation with you at a later no problem. stage. I don't want this whole interview to be about this. No problem. Uh, but officially, I, I don't pick any side with Israel and Palestine. I'm not pro-Jewish or pro-Muslim. Um, let me, I, let, I do think we have let's go, as let's South go. Africans bigger problems to be honest to be honest than Israel and Palestine. But to what you're saying, you're very right. At any given time, it could be a match that lies, lights a bigger explosion for the rest of the world. Absolutely. So especially because both those communities, the, the Jewish and the Muslim, are very influential in this country from an economic political perspective. And they've been both of them instrumental in our history to where we are today. Okay, what about this religion of yours because this sure. is this is interesting i mean it could just be like a gimmick and i got to figure out whether you mean it or not because i'm not a religious person so i don't take anything that Full people atheist? say well agnostic i mean okay. i used to be I, I used to be a militant atheist like going around just basically I started, finding, I started there as well. Finding arguments to just make other people feel silly about their religions and it was more about me getting a kick out of that than it was about Seeing the, the the value, Richard Dawkins and uh, yeah, Dawkins and, Hutchins. Dawkins and Hitchens and Hitchens. Sam Harris and all of those guys, the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, as they called themselves. Those are my boys. <clears throat> well, yeah, but what I've realized is, actually, the religious people may be greater allies to us and a better bulwark to civilization than atheists or An agnostics. Atheist w- without any anchor in the real world. Yeah. And with terrible left-wing religiosity replacing the God-shaped hole in them. Yeah. Right? So what is your religion? So I, I fully agree with you. I also went, um, I actually almost went 360 with religion. I was baptized Roman Catholic. Um, I was very big in choirs. I used to be a choir boy. Mm. And with choirs where I come from, very Afrikaans, we sang a lot of churches, a lot of Enchia churches. My mom went to churches. I love gospel to this day. So I, I got really plugged into the church. But when I got to varsity, I was questioned on my beliefs. And I started a journey of wanting to be the best Christian I can be. I wanted to be a, an embodiment of Christ. 
what Prophet Muhammad is as an example of what Islam is meant to be, I want it to be that. I want people to be like, are you not the second coming? And I'm like, maybe, because I am almost you, the you, saint. You probably, just to go back, you should be in Jerusalem. This is called a Jerusalem syndrome. What really? You, what you've got. It's a God complex. Sure. That is correct. <laughs> I, I fully agree with you. So it's in a mental my, illness, by the way. They treat it is. This, it is a mental there's, illness. There's a hospital in Jerusalem that deals with people like you. I can believe that. <laughs> and they put you in a ward. At, <laughs> at, least, at least people are not being crucified anymore. At some point when the gent had a God complex, they put him on a cross, mm. which kind of sucks. But yeah. luckily we have okay, a bit more freedom today. You wanted to embody all of what Jesus represented. I wanted to be the best Christian I can be. And I said, let me go to the source because a lot of pastors, preachers were not giving me the answers. I read the Bible from beginning to end. And after reading it, my head was spinning. I was like, there's no way this is the book that people like would go and crusade for. This is rubbish. So I went on this aggressive atheist path of saying, this is a nonsense book. It's misled people. People have died. And, and, and is God really real? This is an imaginary person that the elite used to control you. And over time, I, I realized that a lot of people need that grounding and that centering. And we'll say maybe 95 to 99% of religious people are good people. They mm. contribute to society. Yes. They pay their taxes. They, I agree with you. They are good people. And I was like, I think religion is important. So now it's like, now that I've realized, do I, I'm, I'm realizing, but I'm tainted. Do I go and become a reformed pastor? Do I convert to Islam? Do I go through the long process of becoming Jewish? Like, I think we'll see Gobe said, Big Daddy mm. Liberty. Yes. Um, and I was like, but why not come up with something fresh? A lot of these things are thousands of years old. We've got cell phones now. We've got tech. We've got artificial intelligence. We've got podcasting. Why must I go with the old when we can create something new? And it's it started off as a social experiment. Um, and that's what it kind of is for now until further notice. There's, but you're not, I, try, you're not trying to spread your religion like the religious leaders of old. You're not trying to get converts. I, or is that expressly the purpose of your show, for example? So I've got, I've got like my own Bible. It's called Penalism Principles. <laughs> really dope. Okay. And there's a chapter there on my admiration for the Jewish and the Muslim communities. Mm. And I think one of the reasons the Jewish community is so amazing is precisely because it is so exclusive. And I like that very much. Uh, we were speaking about voting earlier. You want to have like 2 billion Christians and one point whatever billion Muslims. But you like to be honest for what we're trying to achieve, which is a better world. You don't need everyone to be part of this thing. You just need like the right people. Well... As I keep telling people, especially those who think, you know, we need 50 million South Africans mobilized to get this place right. You the don't. French Revolution was a handful of people yeah. who sat in coffee shops in Paris. Yeah. It didn't take the whole nation. It didn't. The Bruder Point was like 20,000 members. Yeah, just you, light that fire. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a minority of people who just say up to here and no further. Correct. So They change so, the world. So I'm, 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 I'm building a belief system which is exclusive which borrows from what I think is the best of all the other belief systems, including Buddhism, which I think is pretty dope. Um, and I'm like, let me see how far this goes. People are in inventing sneaker brands, beverage drinks, clothing lines like Yeezys. Why like, not why invent not, a religion? Why not a belief system that people are like, I am now under Scientology. I am now whatever it is. Like, why not? Out of all the cool things I could do, this sounds pretty cool and it makes people want to meet me. So let me try it out and see how far it goes and see if I can meet cool people. Because especially now that I'm no longer hostile to other religious groups. That, that's, I mean, to your credit, um, it took me a lot longer to drop that hostility because there was, there was no reason for it. Uh, how long? Because yeah. it took me like four years. Oh, no, it took me 10, 12. Jeez, okay. Yeah, and it was just a pointless waste of energy to be arguing with people who have a value system yeah and i come in and i'm like trying to disrupt that for what purpose to make them cry to, to and they happy they're at peace. yeah they, exactly to unsettle yeah. their their way of understanding the world that's stupid so yeah. it took me a long time to get out of that so the fact that you got out of it as quickly as you did again that's a, a compliment to you no, so all right what, what do you see happening for yourself in the next let's not stretch us too far the next five years what are the opportunities that you want to pursue what are the things you want to do in society? Where do you want to make a difference? Bishop T.D. Jakes says uh, the mind is the battleground. 
the beginning and the end of all conflict, for, forget Israel and Palestine, Russia and Ukraine, is our own minds. I think even when you were lashing out as an atheist, you were probably battling yourself and it was like spilling out probably. over other people. Probably. I'm trying to battle my mind because I'm trying to get to a point of success. Uh, when I was younger, success was having a lot of money and living well. Then later on, success became setting big goals and achieving them. That was my definition. Today, my definition of success is aligning my thoughts and ideas and aspirations with my actions. And currently, there's a misalignment. Once I can get to that point, I will make music, which is what I'd like to do. Really? I will write more books. I've got 13 currently. Get them onto platforms where I can. And I will grow my belief system to try and find the best of human beings and try and, and create a better world. All these things obviously start with good intentions. Um, but I, I, I really think it's, it's time for something fresh. The UN, World Economic Forum, BRICS, and those guys, I don't think they're as dope as they initially thought they would be. And even the forms of capitalism, socialism, whatever you want to call it, we also don't need to be stuck in those things anymore. We can come up with like newer concepts, new names, and see how that goes. I, I believe very much in meritocracy. I believe in non-racialism as difficult as it is, it's a very niche space. And even the most well-meaning non-racialists are not, including myself. I'm also struggling with it to really, really not see color. Well, it's to strive for a perfection that we're almost incapable of Correct. reaching. It's the essence of sadomasochism. You're made sick and commanded to be healthy. What's sadomasochism? So, so, I mean, the idea that some people like being hurt and some people like hurting. Jeez. Uh, yeah. that, 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 it's, a, it's like a fetish thing, yeah. BDSM stuff. But essentially in philosophy, we talk about sadomasochism as this, this inability for us to actually reach our own. Like you were talking about how you want to embody Jesus. Yeah. And many people feel that they've got to try for that, but it is an unattainable goal. Correct. I see this often with environmentalists too, who I, I, don't, I really don't, I mean, I love being in an unspoiled natural place that people haven't destroyed. Yeah. And I do think that we're bad stewards of the planet. Correct. But, but these environmentalists are essentially chasing something that they don't know the victory conditions of winning. Yeah. They, they, they want to make the world a better place, but they're gluing themselves to roads and stuff yeah. and doing nothing for the environment. They, don't, they can't tell you how much of a carbon emission contribution China makes. They, won't, yeah. they don't know any of this stuff, but they're like hugely activist about it. And similarly, humans will be chasing something that they can never attain. And in doing so, they hurt themselves some of the time. It's fine to pursue a noble goal. Yeah. Um, and I like the idea of you creating this entirely new belief system. Mm -hmm. But you got to be watching out the whole time that it's not a cult. It is uh, a cult uh, by uh, definition. So is a cult always bad? That, that, that is one of the questions that I'm hoping to bring up. Because, look, I apologize, but I have to use this guy as an example. Because he's, he's the dopest, coolest guy. Who? Jesus Christ. Okay. He started off as a cult figure. Yeah, these 12 guys that are like, Gareth, we sure. think you're dope. Let's set up Cliff Central. It's not a real thing. The SAPC and Fox, those are real things. This is just a little room somewhere. And you're like, you've got 12 guys that believe in you and you guys go around doing mm. good work. And other people are like, this is actually a cool guy. And later on, the incumbents, the multi-choices and the, they come and they crucify whatever that is today, cancel culture. Mm. And they shut down your platform. And other people are like, no, I am Cliff. I am Cliff. I'm Gareth. I'm, and they wear these t-shirts. I am Gareth Cliff. I stand with in solidarity with him. People need to ask, because there's a, a nice documentary that says cult plus time equals religion. Absolutely. Which essentially is that I'm a cult figure because I'm the center of this belief system, but you need to then criticize on the, on the content. I can be like, I want to be a dictator. I'm a communist. And everyone's like, no. And then I go out and I help the world and I do good things and I help business people thrive. Like, is this guy really a communist? Like, that's a good question. Because you guys buy so much into names, you forget to look at the substance of someone or something. So I don't want to be a cult figure in the negative connotation sense, definitely. Um, nothing in what I'm doing is meant to cause harm for anyone, but it will cause harm for the incumbents because they will lose some of their power because so it relies on ignorance. What's the closest you've come to being completely cancelled where you thought, oh, oh, I've gone over the line? What, what does being cancelled mean? Um, no, well, I, having my my accounts deleted. Essentially, I mean, you were talking about being blocked on here, blocked on there, or people uh, arguing with you and saying that you shouldn't be allowed to say the things that you're saying. Yeah. Um, what what is it that you talk about that gets the most heat? So 
Cancelling in real time is is being murdered. Sure. Like political killings, killing of a drug Fair territory. enough. And that happens. It, it happens. Fortunately, it, it really, really happens. It happens even yeah. on social media. I sure. have never received... Oh, have I received a death threat? No, I've never received a death threat. Um, but that would be the worst uh, case of cancel culture. Lower levels of that is maybe having my bank account taken away to Tuzani Zuma, the Guptas and those guys. I've never had that, luckily. Um, being arrested is another form of cancel culture. I've mm -hmm. luckily never committed a crime that warrants that because I have committed crimes. <laughs> uh, lied on an affidavit, maybe, somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I've been blocked, man, by Facebook and those things. And the, you you learn, you, you master the algorithms. Speaking on the LGBTQI plus community is, is a no-go today. Yeah, you've I've just, spoken out about it and I've been win, banned. Right? Um, I'm what, lucky. What, 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 what do you say there that upsets them? Um, Everything. <laughs> so I've criticized uh, transgenders, specifically when Siv Ngesi, he dress up. Mm. Um, and I remember there was a specific tweet where yo, it went viral and I was being attacked by a lot of people in the remote community. I was sharing my view saying, I've got no issue with transgenders. My issue is I want you to acknowledge that you're trans and tell me you're trans. Don't tell me I'm a woman and I must accept that you're a woman. Tell me that you're a trans woman. I'll accept that. I feel there's like a lie in wanting to be acknowledged as something that you weren't before. Um, I like the idea of, you know, I used to be South African. I'm, I'm Canadian now. So don't just, you know, your Canadian forefathers. And I'm like, oh, look, we tried many generations. No, I'm actually of South African descent. <laughs> but now if I'm like, no, I always identified as Canadian. I, I feel like my ancestor. And you're like, no, bro. Like own what you are. You're transitioned and that's fine. It's your life. But when you say that you're being transphobic, uh, according to many of the people there. So comments like that would be a problem. Uh, on both sides, I get accused of racism. Uh, I'm a paying member of Afri Forum, so you can imagine the heat I get from black people, spe specifically EFF sure. supporters. Then what I speak, the, What do they call you? Uh, sellout, of course. Mm. Uh, back in the day, Askari, I'd be necklaced, which I don't think is a death threat, but they'd say things like this to try and mm. rattle my cage. Then I'd say things like, you know, I love the fact that Julius Malima stands up to white arrogance that is built on ignorance and... One of the reasons so many people love him, love Jacob Zuma, outside of whatever scandals they may have, is this is a black man that when a white man who is feared by others says something to him, he, has he something talks to say back, back or yeah. he laughs at him. Hmm. I like that. So when I say I understand that dynamic or I appreciate that or, you know, shout out to Julius and the EFF, then you get other people. You support this racist guy who wants to turn South Africa into Zimbabwe. You're like, Ugh. so I, I, I've had issues with, being accused of racism on both sides. Uh, you can imagine Penwell is God. Don't say that. I love you, bro. I love your mind, but just leave this thing. This is, now you're- They call you, know, you arrogant. Yeah. Sure. L look, it is almost the highest level of uh, upsetting people because your belief system is beyond political. It's beyond a nation, whatever nation you are patriotic to. It's beyond a tribe. It's beyond a race. You're now going Starting to... Starting to sound like a John Lennon song, but yes, I get you. Oh, yes. Let's <laughs> add uh, some music there. Imagine. But it, it's, it's, sure. it's, it's like the core... I mean, I've left the Zulu nation. Now, this is another one that... Why do you mean you've left the Zulu nation? You are Zulu. I'm like, Zulu is not a... It's not a blood type. You can't check my blood and be like, oh, Gareth is... You can trace that I'm from Zulu origin. Yeah. Because of the people there. and But we weren't born Zulu. People decided the people of this area will now fall under a kingdom of Zulu, like the British Empire. Anyone can but create what, a you, nation. You, you don't take any cultural inheritance from being Zulu. So you are white, European, sort of, South African, hmm. and you were Christian? Hmm. You were. Hmm. Okay. So I... Not really. you, you spoke about philosophy. I've questioned a whole lot of these things. But so you, 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 you basically go back to basics on everything. On everything. So I left, I left the church and people would be like, oh, since you're not Christian, that means you practice African spirituality. And I'm like, actually, I don't know. And I did a deep dive on that. And I realized in the deep dive that most black people in this country are no longer living in a cultural life. We visit it on Heritage Day and when there's an event and we pretend to be hardcore. And if someone says something against it, you get like you get very angry. upset. Right. Even though... 
if I ask you who your ancestors were, you yeah, know yeah. That. yeah. But the Zulu nation essentially is like a country. It is a piece of land. It has got an authority figure being a king, and there's some type of prescription. I do not like what they stand for anymore, what they represent, and I'm like, I don't want to be a part of that group. Yeah, but you, I'm like, no, my heritage is there. Mm. A lot of my family identifies Zulu. I don't want to identify Zulu. Stop speaking Zulu. I speak English. I'm not British. Calm the fuck down. It's a language. <laughs> I'm not going to stop speaking Zulu because it annoys you. <laughs> but so, obviously to you, identity is something that's under construction. Yeah, and it's a, it's a big, it should be a big thing for everyone. I think that's amazing. Yeah. I, I, I do, and I, I'm absolutely sure it infuriates people. Very because much. to them, identity is just something that they've been given. And you or something that they make small changes to here and there, but they're not completely comfortable with someone who's prepared to remake their identity from the ground up. And create a new one. Penalism, are they black? No. Are they South African? No. Are they men? Must you have a penis? Must you, you know the brutal point? You must be white, Afrikaner, <laughs> Calvinist, male, married. Uh, no, it's just if you're a good person and you believe in the principles we have, community, questioning things. I hope. And, and. I really hope that the strength of character that you have now and the confidence that you have now continues to be a source, not only of inspiration for you in this quest to rebuild your identity from the ground up, but for all those people who are intrigued by you. And I, I include so. myself because it is good to see someone who swims against the tide. It makes me happy. It, like, it genuinely fills me with a kind of joy that I don't get from the things I do myself. It's because you're a rebel yourself. That's well, why. I do. And I don't like people who just bow down to authority. Yeah. Right. And you're clearly not one of those people. Yeah. So even though you and I may find a million things to disagree about. Sure. We will never be bored in each other's company. I hope so. And, and that to me is the very best thing that I could find in meeting someone and having conversations like this. Is someone I can interact with where there is always space to learn and there's always space to teach. Do you know how many people you inspire? I don't. And it's sad because most of them will probably never say because they're scared of being criticized by whoever, whatever community they're part of. I just want to say on behalf of all the people you inspire that are scared to speak out, whether they are Afrikaans <laughs> or whether they're black or whether they... Um, we just want to say thanks, Gareth. We, we don't say it enough. We appreciate you. I mean, it's the reason why we admire people like Elon, Kanye, we disagree on so many things, but for the fact that they stand up and they're like, well, this is me, bro. You don't have to like it. Maybe it's not wrapped up in the cloth that you you, you prefer, but Dude. we appreciate it. And we appreciate this platform. Thank you. Um, I've, I've had to learn to be good at compliments, um, at taking them, that is. I know. And I appreciate that coming from you because I do think you are a shining star that's only just starting to rise in the sky. And I don't bullshit. That's you don't bullshit. Yeah, so but I I'm, look, I'm looking forward to watching you with uh, great interest over the next couple of years. Thanks, I Gary. do think you're just getting started. I hope so. Good man. Nice to see you. And thank you for coming. Thank you for the invite. And I look forward to us building this, this relationship and, and seeing where it goes. We have, the ability to, we have the ability to shake the world. And that's one of the things, it's one of the reasons people love the Springboks. And I think we should have that same mindset. There's, there's nothing, Elon is South African. There's nothing superior about these American, Chinese, Russian guys. We actually have it. We just have to find each other, small group like the French, and believe and then- Make and, a difference. Set shit alike. Good man. Thank you, Penwell. Cheers.